We welcome in Golf Channel contributor Ron Syrak. And Ron, we are all excited about Becoming Annika, which is premiering Tuesday. And you had a big part in that documentary. What strikes you now about Annika that maybe was a whole different story back in the day? You know, I first met her 26 years ago. And the first time I interviewed her, she was so shy. I had to interview her caddy to get some quotes I could use for my story. And to watch her evolve into the person she is today, a businesswoman, a, a TV personality, a motivational speaker, uh, and to see that all come out of her um, is just uh, an, an astounding growth of a, of a human being, as well as the fact that I saw some really, really good golf. <laughs> May is a huge month for college golf and big news this past week uh, when it comes to the LPGA Q school regarding college athletes. What's the news people need to know about? What kind of impact do you think it might have? Well, the, getting rid of the uh, the, op, the, the uh, uh, option to defer uh, membership to the tour or, or uh, you know, keep your amateur status. I think it's going to make a lot of college coaches really happy. They're not going to be put in the position where halfway through the year, they could lose one or two of their best players. I think ultimately down the road too, the players are going to be really happy for this. Because if you look, 16 players have had that option and 14 of them have decided to, to join the LPGA. The two who deferred, Jennifer Cupshow and Maria Fossey worked out pretty well for them. I think people are starting to realize now how much better women's college golf is than it was a decade ago, and that you can stay in college and really develop the chops there to make you ready to join the LPGA. There have been plenty of women's college golf coaches around the country, as you alluded to, that would see their rosters look very different at Thanksgiving and then the start of a new year. Potentially, this will eliminate and soften things moving ahead. As we look ahead to the Founders Cup, we have seen some unexpected winners on the LPGA Tour this year, like Marina Alex a couple weeks ago in California. Give me a couple of players we should focus on this week in the Garden State, Ron. Well, you know, look at the first 10 tournaments of the year for the LPGA. We've had 10 different winners out there. Um, if we're going to go along that way, there are two players in the top five in scoring average right now who have yet to win. They're Minji Lee and they're Lexi Thompson. I think that those are two people to be, to be looking for this week. I particularly have my eye on, on Lexi because... Um, she won 10 tournaments in seven years, at least one tournament, seven consecutive years until the pandemic really derailed her. Didn't win in 2020, didn't win in 2021. She's now 0 for 47 uh, in her last 47 starts on tour. I, I think that we're going to see her put it together really soon. All right, I'm jotting it down. Lexi Thompson, if not this week, soon, according to Ron Syrak. And before we let you go, Ron, when we take a look at the Founders Cup as a whole, it has always been a very solid test for the women. Why do you think this event really has a history of producing some wonderful champions? You know, it's almost like it's the karma of playing for the founders, playing for those pioneers, all those early uh, people who made the LPGA what it is today. You look at the 10 Founders Cups that we've had, all 10 have been won by players who have a major championship victory on their resume. Two of them, uh, Kari Webb, Imbi Park, have seven majors on their resume. Uh, I, I do think that it's, it's the fact that when the, the players get there, the best players reach down and bring the best out in their game because it is for the founders, because it is for those early pioneers. And let's hope that trend continues this week in New Jersey yet again at the Founders. Ron, always good to catch up, my friend. Hope to see you again soon. Talk to you down the road, my friend.